بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليكم to everyone who may be tuning into this short video welcome to those who may be passing by also in this short video today I am going to talk a little bit about how to approach studying the Islamic spiritual tradition. I teach from a platform called OnlineShiaStudies.com. I have quite a few students that are interested in the course Esoteric Knowledge in Tashayyu and they are interested in the spiritual dimensions of the teachings of the Holy Prophet and his progeny, peace be upon them. I just want to give a few helpful tips on how to approach study. Oftentimes when you come to approach study after many years or perhaps you haven't ever studied in depth in the humanities subjects, your mind may be a little bit undisciplined and a little bit chaotic. You approach the subject with great enthusiasm, you have many questions that you want answered and you are asking about sometimes some very deep, big and complex subjects that are not easy to answer in five minutes. Also, with a lack of training in the mind, what can happen when you start to study is that you are dying to get answers to your questions, but you don't have the discipline of your mind to listen to the answers that are being given to you. And so then your mind doesn't stop long enough to absorb the answer to your question and you jump to the next question. This is just something that I'm noticing with a few people that are coming to the platform. So I wanted to give some helpful information on how to embark on studying the spiritual tradition. It's very important to approach study with discipline and with a degree of rationality and to establish some kind of system by means of which you approach the topic. For example, with regard to Islamic spirituality, the Islamic spiritual tradition consists of many different trends. It has its own history. And so in order to understand what that tradition is, you need to study the unfolding of the history of that tradition. Many people, when they approach Islamic spirituality, they are grabbing at the different texts that are available that may have been written by different Arafat, different Noahs, and they are not really looking critically at those texts or understanding the social political contexts in which those texts were written. So first of all, it's very important to understand the unfolding history of the Islamic spiritual tradition. Another point is with regard to how you study history in the first place. As historians say, our view of history can only really ever be a hypothesis because what we are depending upon in our understanding of history is the texts that are available. Traditionally, within Islam, Muslims are taught that the version of history that they are presented with is a definite signed and sealed version of history and that it is just a matter of learning what that signed and sealed history is. But in actual fact, we need to understand First of all, the history of writing. In Arab society, it was not common for people to read and write. The tradition of starting to write down history was something that developed over time after the death of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his holy progeny. In fact, considering that he was from Arab society, which was predominantly an oral society, again, it was very forward thinking to recruit people to write down the Holy Quran and also to encourage people to write what he said and what he did as part of his practice or part of his sunnah. The number of people that could read and write in Arab society was very few. As a side point, it is said that the Holy Prophet himself could not read or write and it is for this reason that the Holy Quran is a miracle, but this is just one understanding of the word Ummi. Ummi has been translated as someone who has not studied 
with other people. For example, he didn't study with the rabbis, he didn't study with the priests. But sometimes it has been translated to mean he couldn't read or write. However, let us bring to mind the very famous event of the Calamity of Thursday that has been narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah the son of the Holy Prophet's uncle Abbas, where the Holy Prophet, in his dying moments, called for a pen and a lamb shoulder bone. Sometimes the narrations say a pen and paper, but actually it was a pen and a lamb's shoulder bone on which people commonly wrote back then because paper was extremely rare, if not non-existent in Arabia at the time. And he wanted to write something down so that the Muslims would never go astray and as we know, Umar ibn al-Khattab prevented the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, from writing something that he wanted to write so that the Muslims would never go astray. So here we have a scenario where the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is asking for a pen in order to be able to write something. This indicates that at least by the end of his life, he certainly could read and write. I would also argue that since the Quran was the final and definitive message to humanity and that the Holy Prophet was the final and definitive prophet that had been sent to humanity, that therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have ensured that the Holy Prophet was someone who could personally check the writing of the Quran and its compilation. That said, as I have said, the number of people that could read and write in Arab society at that time were very few, and that it wasn't until about the time of the first two caliphs under the Abbasid era that we start to see the number of people writing history increasing and writing a hadith also, which is another controversial topic, which we can touch upon in another video. So we have to understand what is history? What do we understand by history? How is our understanding of history today different from what the understanding of history was in the time of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and how was history understood in Arab society at that time also? So once you have got to grips with the fact that as people trying to understand history, we only have available to us the sources and therefore we are drawing up a hypothesis of what history was depending upon the sources that are available. That means that when we approach the Islamic spiritual tradition, likewise, we need to understand what was going on in the society at that time for those texts by these orafa to have been written in the way that they were written. So when you are approaching the study of the tradition, as I said, it requires discipline and dedication. You may require your answers very quickly because of your passion for the subject, but sometimes it is going to take months, if not years of study to really start to approach the answers to your questions. So when you embark on this subject, have sabr, have patience, have endurance, and try to work out a program of study that you are going to stick to. And also perhaps as another tip, set up on your device, on your laptop, for example, a file that is subdivided into other files and have different topics for those files so that when you are engaging in your research, you can just build up the subject matter for that particular topic. So these are just a few tips for embarking on the study of the Islamic tradition and the Islamic spiritual tradition. And inshallah, hopefully in the near future, I will give some more tips on how to approach this subject, inshallah. Thank you for listening 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.